Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father. We greet you in the only name worth mentioning today, and that is the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. It is good and a blessing to be able to rise again <clears throat> one more time for the purpose of praising, worshiping, and magnifying our God. Amen. We realize, recognize, and understand there was nobody but the Lord who allowed us to see yet another day. And for that, God, we give you praise. For that, we give you honor. And for that, we give you glory. We lift the name of the Most High God in this place on today. And to our online uh, community and online audience, we say a good God bless you. Good morning to you. And we're grateful for you tuning in with us as we share the word of the Lord. Amen. The word of the Lord says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Truly, God, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. The choir is coming to favor us with a selection, and then we shall return with the word of God.
Every time I turn around, he keeps making a way somehow. Over and over and over and over and over again, the Lord continues to bless me. Amen. Amen. Just before we go into the word of the Lord, I want to say thank you to the deacons, the trustees who were here on yesterday to make sure that the sacraments were distributed. Again, thank you to those brothers on Wednesday who were here for uh, the food box pickup and distribution. We're grateful for your uh, presence and your effort to help serve that we can continue to do ministry um, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen. Do not forget, uh, again, to those persons who did receive their vaccines. Um, on the Wednesday before last, I believe on April the 21st, I believe it is, is your next um, vaccine. So please check your check your uh, information, calendars, or schedules. April the 21st will be the second part of that vaccine for those who are able to get uh, your vaccine on that particular Wednesday. If you're interested, please go to uh, DHEC's website and they will give you further information about uh, sites where you can receive your vaccination if you are interested in uh, being vaccinated. Amen? Amen. So we pray that everyone that can and that will, that feels led, will take that leap of faith and uh, do what needs to be done. Remember, that sometimes what we do is not necessarily for us, but it's for those around us. And then that's one of those moments where it calls for a selfless act because not only are you protecting self, uh, but you're potentially protecting family and friends, co-workers, those who are around you. And it is um, that through that vehicle that will allow society eventually to some way return back to what we consider to be normal. Amen? Amen. And I don't know when we get back to what we consider to be normal, if it will be normal anymore because so much has changed. But in the midst of everything that has changed, God is still God. Amen. And we give him praise, honor, and glory for who he is. Shall we look to the Lord? Father, we love you today. And God, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. Here we are, God, one more time, situated in this Bethel spot for the purpose of preaching your word. I pray now, Lord, that you would take me out of self, wrap me up, tie me up, and tame me up in your spirit, that what I will say will be pleasing in your sight. Allow the conversation we had in private now to be made public for the declaration of your word. Use me in a way that you've never used me before, that you would get all the honor and all the glory, but that somebody will hear your word. And if there's one who is not saved, God, if salvation be in your will, we pray that salvation will come to that soul on today. We give you praise, honor, and glory. It's in the wonderful and perfect name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And the people of God say, Psalms 73, Psalms 73, I want you in your time of uh, devotion or reading to read the entire account, but for the purpose of preaching today, I want to deal with verses 25 through 28, Psalms 73, I want to deal with verses 25 through 28, but in your time of reading, I would that you would read the entire Psalm 73. Psalm 73, the entire account. Verses 25 through 28, according to the New King James Version, there you shall find these words recorded. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. 
You have destroyed all those who desert you for a harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. And I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to try to preach today from those portions of Scripture from the simple thought, I see better now. I see better now. My brothers and sisters, perception is a important thing to have. Perception is very important in our daily living because it is through one's perception that one is able to see and decipher certain things that may go on in life and around life. By definition, perception is the ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through one's senses. And Perception is always left up to the specific individual because you may see one thing and perceive it one way. I may see one thing and perceive it half full. And, uh, the, the, the story has been told of the glass of water on the table and because of perception, one person sees the glass as half empty and because of perception, one sees the glass as half full. It's all about perception and how you see it. And your level of perception and my level of perception may be two different uh, ways of seeing something. Doesn't mean I'm right and you're wrong. Doesn't mean you're right and I'm wrong. It's just chopped up to one's perception and how we see it. The story was told of a zookeeper who was about to do an experiment about perception and he allowed a group of blind men to come in and touch an elephant. The first blind man reached out his hand and grabbed the elephant's tail and his perception was that elephant is likened to a big rope. The next man came in, felt the leg of the large elephant, spoke and said, no, the elephant looks like a large log or tree. The the next man walked forward, ran straight into the elephant's side. He said that the elephant is big, it's a big wall. Next, the next man came in and reached out and took hold of the elephant's ears. And he said the elephant is like a big fan. The next man came in and decided that the first four was slightly wrong and they could not be describing the same creature. So he carefully walked up, put his hand on the elephant's raised trunk and the man grinned and said my brothers, you gotta understand that elephant is a big snake. The final man walked up confused and forward to reach out his hand and looked at the elephant, put his hand on the tusk of the elephant paused and said the elephant is a big sword. It's all about perception. Six men touched the same animal but they had a different Point of what it was that they put their hand to. The problem which confronted the writer in this text today was a problem called perception. This particular psalm, Psalm 73, is not attributed to our beloved David, but is attributed to one of the Levites by a man by the name of Aspa. Aspa was looking at his situation of life from the wrong vantage point and how often are we guilty of doing the same when we go through life, we look at life from a specific vantage point and it causes us to have a different perception about how we see life. This song teaches us how we, are, we need to get our eyes off of our circumstances and place them squarely upon the Lord. And in this last year and a half, many of us have looked life and all of us have different perceptions about what has happened. We have different perceptions about what is happening. We have different viewpoints about what will happen. And we're so busy trying to dictate what was, what is, and what shall become that we took our eyes off of who 
Egyptians. And we start looking at what happened last year. We start looking at what's happening now. And we try to be to we try to become fortune tellers and declare what's gonna happen on tomorrow. But the truth of the matter is your perception shifts when you take your eyes off of your stuff and your circumstances and you put your eyes on the Lord. That's what happened to Aspot in Psalm 73. He took his eyes off of what was going on around him and he put his focus on God. If you look at verse 17 of Psalm 73, Aspot said, until I went into the sanctuary of God. In other words, until I got in the place where it was just me and when it was just me and God. What was happening no longer was important. What my neighbor was doing was no longer important. What my deacons were doing was no longer important. But when I went into the sanctuary, that's why I said it was just me and God. And that's when I got to the place so I can see better now. And all I'm trying to do is let somebody know today that if you can get to the sanctuary, where it's just you you can see things a little bit better. Yes, I know we're concerned about the state of the nation, the state of the world. But in the midst of our concern and our circumstances, can we get to the sanctuary of God? That's what I said until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood. My brothers and sisters, I need you to understand uh, that as a Levite who understood uh, where the gift came from, uh, he used his music to praise the Lord uh, and to communicate his word, the word of God, uh, through music. Uh, but he got to a place in life uh, where life became overwhelming to him. Uh, and he started looking at the situations of life. Uh, and he took his eyes off of God. Uh, and it changed his perspective. Uh, and the only way he got back to the right place uh, is he stopped looking at what was going on around him. Uh, and he did what David said in Psalms 121. Uh, I will lift my eyes unto the hills uh, from which comes my help. Uh, my help comes from the Lord. Uh, my help does not come from anybody who is around me. Uh, but my help comes from the Lord. He's not talking about a tangible type of help, but he's talking about a spiritual type of assistance. So we can help one another based upon different situations and circumstances, but when it comes to our spiritual needs, the only one that can help us is the Lord my God. The first thing I want you to see in this text, I see better now, is that the information that we gain from Aspar. If you go back to Psalm 73, verse number 1, he says, Truly God is good to Israel, to such are the pure in heart. Now the verse 2 says, But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. In verse number 1, we see him standing on solid ground. He has been taught about the goodness of God. He's been taught about that the Lord is nothing but good. He's true to his name. Matthew 19, Jesus said, There is none good but God. He's been taught two things. That God blesses his people. For the Lord God is the sun and the shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. And no good thing will be withheld from those who walk upright with the Lord. He was taught not only that God blesses the people, but he was taught that God blesses the pure and heart. Matthew 6 and 33, Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all shall be added unto you. That's why I was standing on solid ground. And he knew of the goodness of the Lord. But as he was standing on solid ground, and he knew of the goodness of the Lord, he started looking at the land of the wicked. Let me say it again. He was standing on solid ground. And he knew of the goodness of the Lord. But he took his eyes off of the goodness of the Lord and he started looking at the land of the wicked that reminds me of the story when Peter was in the boat and Jesus was on the sea and the Bible says that Peter looked out and said Lord is that you the Lord said yes it's me Peter and Peter said Lord if it be you bid me to come to you the Bible says Peter stepped out the boat and started walking on the water. 
is coming. The drought is coming. And another pair of glasses for me. Just 
anybody but God who got me to change my perspective. And as we continue to go through this season of pandemic and everybody's perspective has gotten twisted. Everybody got it all beside yourself, got upset, folk getting depressed, folk going through anxiety, because all because the Lord has said, I need you to sit down and rest a little while. Everybody's all beside yourself because we can't come back to church. But my question is, what happened to the church? Because the church is not the building, but the church is you. So if you left the church, that lets you know that the church wasn't in you when you were sitting in the church. You got to get to the place where you know the greatest is he that's in me and he that's in the world. Whether I'm in the sanctuary or whether I'm in the car or whether I'm in the bathroom because he's in me and I am him and he's me no matter where I am. I'm in the church. Because I see better now. My perspective has changed. I'm no longer being caught off guard by what's going on around me. If you read Psalm 73, Aspire was upset with God. He was upset with God. God, I'm doing all that I can. And it looks like the sinner is prospering. But when he gets to verse 25, he says, I see better now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. I had to stop looking Thank you, Lord. at the sinner Thank you, Lord. and start looking Hallelujah. at the Savior. Hey. I told you last week that there was, as Jesus hung on the cross between two thieves, yes, sir. one sinner realized that, yes, I'm a sinner, but I'm hanging here beside the Savior. And my plea to you last week was uh, to put your eyes on the Savior. Uh, my plea is still the same this week. Uh, stop focusing on the sinners around you uh, and start looking at the Savior inside of you. I see better now. I see better now. Because it's not what's happening around me. But it's what's going on Inside me. I said this over and over. When we get back to the place of worship, there's going to be a shift that has taken place because God is not dealing with us as He's dealt with us before. He's given us time to pray, He's given us time to fast. He's given us time to meditate. He's given us time to focus on his word. He's given us time to change our perspective. The only way you can change your perspective is through the word of God. And I was in a conversation just yesterday about the word of God. A question came to me, and I'm finished said to me, seems like sometimes God's word can be quite contradictory. Seems like he says one thing over here and says something else over there. Seems like if God is God, he said, Pastor, then why are we going through what we're going through? And I replied to them, I said, I I don't have the answer to that question. But because he is God, I'm reminded of what Isaiah said, that his ways are not my ways, and his thoughts are not my thoughts. It's not my job to figure out the mind of God. It's God's job to 
the red mountain. And the Bible says that he would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So it's my job to keep my mind focused on him. And if I keep my mind focus on him, then he will direct me, and I won't be worried about what's going on around me, because my mind is focused on him. Problem is, we've lost our perspective. We got to get back to the place where we realize there's nobody but God. That's why I said in verse 28, but it's good for me. In other words, I don't know what works for you, but it's good for me to trust in the Lord. It's good for me to take him at his word. It's good for me to believe that what he did for others, he can do it for me. It's good for me to believe that the same God who died on Calvary and rose the third day morning, it's good for me to still trust in that Lord. It's good for me to still trust in the one who raised the dead. It's good for me to still trust in the one who fed 5,000. It's good for me to still trust in the one who said he's a healer. It's good for me to trust in the one who said he's a way maker. Wake up in the place that's prepared for me. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. 
flesh and faith are always at war. Flesh is saying, you ought to curse God in that. But I remember what Job told his wife, you speak like a foolish When you know how good the Lord has been to you, that's why relationship is so important because you have to, you testify based upon your relationship with God. You can't testify for me based upon what I've been through. That's my testimony. Yes, it is. You got your own relationship. You got your own battles that you've overcome, your own breakthroughs that you come through that you can attribute to it being nobody but yes, yes, I see that now. Yes, God, go ahead and do whatever you're going to do. Yes, and take your time in doing it. Because I know when it comes full circle, yes, all things are going to work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. It, 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 it will work out. I, I, I just, I'm foolish enough to believe that it will work out. Might not work out the way I think it should. But I'm foolish enough to believe what God said in his word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As I preached a couple of months ago, what other choice do I have? Yes, Who else do I have yes, that I can lean and depend on but the Lord God in heaven? Yes, yes, and so because I trust in him, yes. I'm going to follow him. Yes, and I expect God to do just what he said. God is not a man that he should yes. Be the son of man that he should repent if God said it. Yes, sir. You can take that one to the bank. Thank you. I see better now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My mind has changed. My perspective has changed. The way I look at it has changed. It's not working out the way my flesh wants it to, but my faith says. Yes, sir. I look up to thee. Yes, and if I look up to thee, God, you said you would never lead me astray. And so I trust you to do just what you see. Father, we love you today. And we thank you for helping us to see better. Father, forgive us for looking at what's going on around us and taking our focus off of who is inside of us. But we thank you for reminding us that you are our strength and our portion forever. You are what we need exactly when we need it. And we thank you for being that kind of God. God, we pray now for those who do not know you as their portion. God, we pray for those who are leaning and depending on man to bring them through this situation. And I pray, God, that you would move by your spirit. Touch them and let them realize it's nobody but you who has the power to deliver. It's nobody but you who has the power to heal and the power to set free. All things work together by the power of your voice and the movement of your hand. We thank you for being that kind of God. That even in the midst of a pandemic in the midst of what we're going through, God, you still God. And besides you, there is none other. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, those who are sick now, if it be your will, move by your spirit, touch the hell and body and allow him to come, not only to their mind, but also to their body and to their soul. Father, we know that by your stripes we're already healed. Those who are going through financial foot fa uh, difficulties, God, we know that you said that you would provide everything that we need. And so we pray that you would do what your word says and be a way maker. And then, God, those who are going through bereavement, we pray that you would honor your word and comfort those who mourn. Because death is never easy, whether it's expected or unexpected. 
It's going to be easy, but it's promised to us that man that is born of a woman is of a few days, and those days are full of trouble. But in the midst of the trouble, our faith still looks up to you. Thank you for being the kind of God that we continuously can lean and depend on. We give you that praise, honor, and glory. This is a wonderful, powerful, and perfect name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all the people of God say amen, amen, and praise God. Hallelujah. We thank God for who he is and what he has done in our life. Hallelujah. Bless your name.